All right, guys, let's look at the, uh, the bubbler here. So we've got everything set up here already. I've already got the, uh, the computer talking to the station here. Now, the voltage that we're gonna see going from, because this kind of baffles you guys a little bit. So the voltage that is going from the computer to the actual drive here, if we look here between the common and the zero to five volt input on the drive, right now, sorry, I've got 1.42 volts, right? Now that's based on where I've got this wiper here on the actual computer. So if I go down to uh, zero output, then on the meter, I'm actually getting nothing to the, the pump and the pump is not moving whatsoever. If I want to go to say 25%, Okay, so you can fine tune it with the arrow keys. We got 25% output and we've got 1.2, you know, close to 1.25 volts to the actual drive. So now we're at 25% output and the pump is rocking and rolling now. If I wanna go to 50% output, again, I can fine tune it with the arrow keys here. Okay, half the voltage. Going to the pump gives me something close to two and a half volts to the pump. And now you can hear that the pump is starting to increase in speed. And again, if we go to 75% now, all we're doing is we're changing a zero to five volt to the pump. Wow, that pump does not sound very good. Easy, 75% output. <laughs> That pump is screaming at us now. And we're supposed to be at 3.75, we're at 3.7 volts, okay? And just to finish this guy up, if we want 100%, okay? Crank her up to 100% and we should see five volts. And again, we're seeing 4.94 volts to the drive, okay? Now I've got this pump flying, but the level in the tank is staying stable only because what we've done is we've got two ball valves here, one for the fill and one for the drain. So I'm gonna burn this motor out if I keep it going like this. So I'm just gonna crank this down to um, something tame like, I don't know, 35% open, okay? So the pump is still running and now we're gonna use the ball valves in order to, um, to fill and drain the tank here. So. You can see here if I hit the first fill, right, then the level increases. And if I now change the, the drain valve here, right, so open this guy up, then the water level is slowly decreasing. Now this tank is open to atmosphere. This tube right here is going to the tank. And you can see that inside of the tank, it is open to atmosphere. Those two tubes there are open to through 14.7 atmospheric pressure. So let's stop this guy from dropping, okay? Now you're gonna have to increase, initially increase the, the tank level up to a high, high enough level that um, any air bubbles within these two tubes are gonna be pushed out. Otherwise your tank is not going to drain out properly. So what I've got is I've got the tank now set at 50 centimeters, okay? And now what I'm going to do is, because um, there was some confusion as to where the voltages were being taken. Now this voltage right here that we just looked at is the voltage going to the pump. The voltage that we're going to look at the sensor is going to go between the common and the zero to five output. Okay, this is a DC voltage. So we're going to be on DC volts. And you can see here that the voltage is about five volts. Let me move this out of the way so we're not getting a glare <clears throat> from the lights. So right now I've set up already and calibrated that at the top end of the range, I'm getting five volts corresponding to 50 centimeters. Now that volt voltage is coming from a back pressure. You can see that there is a tube here that goes to the top of the tank 
and inside of the tank there is a dip tube that goes all the way to the base of the tank and you can see just make out here that the air bubbles are just slowly coming out of that tube so that's basically what we want now you can fine-tune this so that because initially you're gonna have quite a bit of bubbles coming out of there and your readings are gonna be off so basically what we want is at the highest level we want to reduce the flow to the bubbler down to a point where the bubbles are just trying to get out of there. So I can just fine tune this with the, the pressure regulator and just have a slow bubble there that's coming out at my highest level, which again is 50 centimeters. Okay. Now I've set the span potentiometer on the DP cell to give me five volts output for my highest level. So on our differential pressure sensor, we've got the zero in the span, and I've just made adjustments to the span potentiometer to reduce the range down so that the highest level corresponds to five volts. So what we'll do now is we'll drop this tank level down. And you'll notice that as the, the tank level decreases, then there's less pressure at the base of the tank or less back pressure going into that tube so you can see that the air coming out of the bubbler is now increasing as the pressure at the base of the tank decreases so we'll stop this guy at 30 centimeters here and at 30 centimeters we should see half of the voltage so our range is 0 to 5 volts and at half the tank level, I should see half of that zero to five. So I should see two and a half volts. Oh, that's gorgeous. 2.485. I mean, it's good enough for a lab, right? It's not exactly 2.5, but that's pretty good for lab purposes. Okay, so what we've got is we've got this back pressure. And as the, the pressure increases and decreases at the base of the tank, well, then it's pushing against this airflow. That airflow is coming from our ball valve here so we've got our regulator here sorry we got 30 psi coming in that's going into a ball valve and that air is coming over here to a precision regulator this precision like regulator can now decrease that 30 psi down to 0 to 6 psi now the column of water when it goes up to 50 p 50 centimeters is like 0.7 uh, PSI at the base of the tank. It's not even a full PSI. So this pressure that's being developed at the base of the, of the bubbler tube there is just above like one PSI or roughly about one PSI. It's greater than whatever the water um, pressure will be at its highest level. I mean, we don't want the water to be going into the bubbler tube. We still want air to be coming out even at our highest level. So Let's drop it down again, and we'll check our uh, 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters would correspond to 25% of our tank level. And we're just slowly dropping down here. And at 20 centimeters, we should get 25%, or we should get 1.25. Now, at the bottom end of the range, it's a little bit off. It's at 1.17. So we could keep calibrating here back and forth. You know, I could decrease the pressure from the bubbler because possibly at this point, um, I've got, you know, too much air going out of the bubbler. That's not bad for lab purposes. So if we go down to our lowest level at 10 centimeters, and we'll just confirm that we've got zero volts. So there's our 10 centimeters now, and we've got 0 0.66 volts. Now, with these pressure transmitters, um, you're going to have to uh, play around with the, with the zero here. Now, this is the lowest voltage that I could get out of this pressure transmitter, so you're not exactly going to get um, zero volts. You know, you're going to get something close to this. So just bump it until you see the meter increase in value and then decrease the voltage and that will act as our lowest voltage. So we got 0.66 at 10 centimeters, and as we increase the level of the tank, you can see that the, 
again, there's our 20 centimeters, right? It's supposed to be 1.25, but we're getting 1.18. And you can see that the back pressure is starting to increase and we're getting less and less bubbles. Or the bubbles are coming out less frequently out of the bubbler there. At 30 centimeters, that's our 50%, so that's supposed to be two and a half. We're getting 2.46. And again, as we increase the level of the tank up to 75%, which would be 40 centimeters, then you can see that we're getting less and less bubbles. So there must be more and more back pressure on that dip tube. At 40 centimeters, we should be getting 3.75. And we can see that the higher end of the range, we're a little more accurate. We're at 3.73, okay? Again, that back pressure is coming back here, right? And then going into the high pressure port of the differential pressure cell, easy now, okay? The low pressure port of the DP cell is open to atmosphere because the top of the tank is also open to atmosphere, okay? And then one last thing what we'll do is we'll just increase again to hit the right ball valve here guys go up to 50 centimeters and at 50 centimeters we should see our max or five volts right and again we've got 5.05 .05. so we've got a linear increase in the voltage which represents the back pressure in the system as the level in the tank increases then there's more hydrostatic head pressure at the base of the tank that pressure is pushing against the air that's coming out of the dip tube. So now you can just see there's just a little bit of air that's pushing through there. That back pressure is going to the high pressure port of our DP cell. And the DP cell is now changing that differential pressure into a voltage output. So it's a linear increase. As the level in the tank increases, then the back pressure increases to the DP cell and the voltage corresponds to that increase in pressure. So as we get an increase in level in the tank, we're getting a linear increase with the voltage output of the bubbler. So it's not a bad way to, to take a look at the, the level in the tank. I mean, for accuracy, we found that, um, you know, looking at the hydrostatic head pressure and having this go straight to the DP cell was a little bit more accurate in the way that we could uh, see the value of the level in the tank. This is mostly used for uh, tanks that contain slurries or particles um, because at that point you would have, if you, if you had this going directly into the pressure transmitter, then that slurry would be going into the, the sensing element of the DP cell. This way we keep the DP cell separate from the actual, you know, components that are, or liquid that's in the tank. All we're doing is we're having air that goes to the bottom of the tank at no point will there actually be anything from the tank that's going back into this tube because we always have air pushing down on that dip tube. So it's mainly for tanks that contain slurries where we need to get a rough estimate, you know, a fairly you know, close estimate as to the level in the tank. So it's a linear, again, a linear increase of level corresponding to a linear increase in back pressure that corresponds to our zero to five volts output.